Okay, there we are. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and potential Toastmasters. Welcome to our show. My name is Ken Richardson. I am the Club Growth Director for District 115. And with me today is my lovely co-host, Phyllis Tribby, Distinguished Toastmaster and past District Governor. How are you, Phyllis? I'm great, Ken, and good morning to our public. How are I you doing today, Ken? I'm doing great. I'm going to slip over here for a moment because I need to double check our Facebook page. And I would wonder if you would mind introducing our very special guest today. Oh, absolutely. I would love to. Our guest today, I first met when she was going to be the division director for D Division D. And I was a brand new Toastmaster. And she said, I've got to have area governors. You want to be an area governor? And I said, you know, I, I'm brand new. Just been in a couple of months. So that was my first meeting with her and she's been a mentor all of my Toastmaster career. Please welcome Mar Maria martinez Riot, past district director, distinguished Toastmaster. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Ken. Nice to see you and it's very nice to be here in your show. Well, we are so glad to have you. And Phyllis, I have to echo your comments. I, Maria, I've known for, for quite some time. And she also at one point asked me about becoming an area director. Um, I don't even know if you remember that, Maria, but we have- No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it very well and I very much appreciated the confidence that you had in me. Now, how long have you been in Toastmasters? I was thinking about that yesterday and if I have my math right, uh, coming April now in two months is going to be 28 years. Wow, 28 years. You That's and Phyllis have years. some time on me. I've, I've only been in <laughs> Toastmasters for 14 years. <laughs> well, hang in there and you will be 28 soon. <laughs> I, <laughs> it goes by so quickly, I'm quite yes. certain of that. What what attracted to you to Toastmasters and what keeps you in uh, for such a long time? Oh, I I wasn't really attracted to Toastmasters. I didn't know about Toastmasters until my boss forced me to go to a, the Toastmasters meeting that was happening at the bank at the time. Literally, he forced me to go. I I have no idea what it was and, and had no desire to or anything like that, but I was made to go, I was forced to go, but he did, he gave me the make the, the biggest favor he, he did for me that was to, to make me go because, but no, I didn't just go knew about it. And I, I it wasn't my choice <laughs> to begin with. Choice. It wasn't your choice, but it sounds like it was a pretty darn good fit. So what's kept you in these 28 years? Oh, it was, it has been a, just a tremendous experience. Uh, I, I think I could, in a way, be the poster child for Toastmasters, and I have learned so much and have gotten so much out of it. It has helped me so much in my life, personally, in my, in my job, that I am just so grateful that, that I ended up there. However I ended up there, I am grateful that it happened because it li literally changed my life, yes. You know, I hear that a lot, and it's so refreshing and so um, positive to hear the stories about folks like yourself uh, and Phyllis and, and myself. I've been in 14 years and I just love Toastmasters and it has been transformative. One of the things that I, I admire about you and Phyllis both is the fact that you have gone all the way through to be district governors, now district directors is the correct title. What led you into leadership, Maria? I think it probably something that happens to a lot of us, as Phyllis said, you know, other people are watching and seeing you get improved and become more comfortable and enjoying the program. And they are looking for the area directors. And I had that, I had George Lund in the club. He's still in my club and a couple of other people. And then I was asked to be the Toastmaster for a, for a contest, evaluation contest. I remember that many, many, many years ago. And it was the, the district, one of the district 
or as, yes, she was following George. So she was, she was in Las Vegas and she met me. I met her, Mary, Mary Jones, you know her, Phyllis, and you know her, Mary Jones. And, and you know, they, then she asked me to. And so people encourage you to do it. And then there is this inner part of you that thinks, can I do it? Can I do it? Do I want to do it? And, and I've always, I am very goal oriented. So it became something that it was a challenge for me to try to do it. I was scared. Of course I was scared, but ended up being the area, area governor, area director. And then I continued on, never stopped. I didn't skip a year. I just, I just continued on challenging myself every time and just scared, but thinking, well, you know, there are other people that have said they would help along the way. I can maybe get some help along the way. And of course yeah. I needed a lot of help, but I, I just kept pushing. And, and I really literally, if I had really stopped to think how scared I was and of all the reasons not to do it, I wouldn't have done it. But I just put blinders on and said, I'm gonna challenge myself to do this. Full speed ahead. So you yeah. went all the way up through the chairs from area director to division to club group. Well, it used to be yeah. VP marketing, VP education, yeah. and then <laughs> district governor. Along that leadership journey, which role do you uh, think was the, that you liked the most? Uh, the role that, that really just fit you so well? I don't know if it fit me so well. Each one of them was, was unique in its own way. Of course, area governor, you, I, I did enjoy going to the clubs and trying to help the clubs. And then I did somehow remember that I thought after it was over, I remember the, the position that you have now, uh, Ken, thinking, well, I kind of enjoyed that too. And I never thought, I thought that was the one that I would dislike the most. But I think because we, I was very lucky, very, very lucky. And during my term in that uh, position as club growth director, we added 10 clubs. Wow. And yeah, I, I don't ask me, I didn't do anything. I, I <sighs> literally, this was happening. Of course we had the district, it was included California. And I just had some great people and it just happened and, and we had 10 clubs. And so I thought, well, okay, that was not totally a failure. <laughs> I was the complete not failure. Not at all. And, I would be thrilled to have that. But success. yes, no, I, I know how difficult it is. And especially now, I think it's even harder now to do it with this uh, online things. But I, I, uh, I enjoyed all of it. Um, the the, the pos next position for you can hopefully I liked, uh, it was hard. It was very hard because at the time we had to get, it wasn't just two times a year or we had the meetings in Bakersfield. You remember Phyllis and every one of those meetings we had to have educationals. So you were trying to get presenters for educationals all year round. So that was a lot of work, but I enjoyed that too. And then district governor, I it was as I got to the last, it was okay, this is the last one. And the biggest challenge there was, I mean, you're always in front of people. You're always in front of the audience, right, Phyllis? I mean, you're always in front yeah. and remembering things and just having people. I had a couple of people that literally were babysitting me <laughs> and they were, they were taking care of me, just, just taking care of things. But so I, I think I enjoy them all in his own way, I should, maybe I should say that in a different way. I did not dislike any of them. I enjoyed every one of them, each one for what it was, yes. Each has its challenge. Now, what yes. year were you, were you district governor? 2001, 2002, I think it was. Tell us, when were you district governor? 2010, 2011. So pretty good gap there. Maybe you could too talk about how things have changed between those years and where we are now. So Phyllis, I'm going to turn it over to you for a moment because I'd like to get you two engaged, yeah. sharing your leadership expertise. How has it changed? I think by the time I came along, there were no longer general members to the uh, DEC, the district council meeting or committee meeting. Before when I first joined, we went to five meetings a year and never thought anything about it where they were in California mainly 
or <laughs> here. We always went and we did the educationals while the area governors or directors got their training. And so it happened. And by the time I came into it, I was very lucky is say I followed Sherry Parker who followed Kate Collis and they had all their organizational skills ready for me to walk right into. And I had them to take care of. But I think it was really different. I really enjoyed the Bakersfield meetings, uh, not having to go all over the state. By the time I came into being, uh, we were going uh, Fresno, uh, Bakersfield, Lancaster, you know, occasionally Las Vegas, but usually general places all over. And some of those were like eight hours away. How many of those do you think we would have made ha back in the day when we went to all five meetings? I don't know, but I, I know that, of course, there was the push to separate the districts and all that. And going to California was a challenge and it took a long time, but one of the things that I think was good about it, first of all, I did enjoy going. It was, it was one of those things you kind of, okay, we're going to Bakersfield. And I did enjoy going, but one of the things that I think was good about it is that it gave people the opportunity to give educational presentations in a smaller setting. It wasn't a full conference. And yes. in fact, that is the very first one that I did a presentation. And I did it with someone else. There were two of us, and which was one thing that George suggested. If you're totally uncomfortable, why don't two of you do it? And then you can kind of feed of each other. But it gave a lot of people the ability to present and have the opportunity to do something and not feel like well, I have to present to a full conference. And, but we got about a hundred people or so. It wasn't totally a small group, but I think it was a good, time to we had it was good that we had the chance to do that and more people to kind of explore whether they wanted to do that route or not which i don't know that we may still have that but not as many times but it was a challenge when you had to get the presenters <laughs> so yeah. i had to do that but one other thing i wanted to point out i came into the to the that position of district director right after 9-11 it was the first one after 9-11. So it was, it was a guess as to how many people we could get or not have and things like that. So it was a unique year in, in that sense too. Well, I believe it's my second year in Toastmasters. I've always gone to all the meetings that the district held, whether they were the council meetings or the committee meetings, the full conferences. And I'm with you, I really miss going over to California. And I was all set for a couple of weeks vacation during their time for their district conference there. And I have now found out that it's going to be online. They are not going to oh. have a person. Oh. So. Oh. You're, talking, you're talking about District 33? For the, yes. for the yeah, District 33 will be uh, online. Oh. And I had hoped to go over and visit with all of my friends. Well, the, the friends, yes, yes. Yeah, you become really attached to the people that work with you. And no matter which one of the roles you have, you have large committees, many people that help uh, get the conference or the program together. Let me just one interject other... here, if I may, for one moment, I want to welcome our online audience. Uh, of course, we have Jennifer. You guys know Jennifer, our public relations manager. She's joined us. And we have a lady I haven't seen before, but we want to welcome her. Her name is Carly. I don't give out last names. So we keep that kind of personal. But she is from Montana, and she has joined us. So I want to welcome both of them. I love this discussion because I'm just so grateful that we have uh, such a rich history already in, in District 15. And by that, I mean, we have people like Maria and Phyllis and Sherry Parker and Kay Collis and George Lund who have been leaders 
when we were part of District 33. And, and I think that makes us so much stronger. So I've just been listening to the two of you talk about that. And I really appreciate that while I'm monitoring this. So I just wanted to welcome our guests and let them know if they have any questions, these are the people who know just about everything there is to know about District 115 and Toastmasters. So I apologize, Maria, please continue with your discussion. The other comment I was going to make was in those days that we used to go to Bakersfield, we had the Friday night social or I don't know, whatever we called it. I forget Phyllis what we used to call it, but each whatever the division was hosting the meeting, then there was the gathering Friday night, an informal meeting. And that was I enjoyed those because there was no, it was just getting to know the people and we all traveled to get there and getting settled. But it was a very nice experience. And I don't think that has that happens now. I mean, there's no way that that can happen now. And I think in a way I, I miss that. I miss that part of it. A lot more socializing. I can remember uh, going up to division F and uh, all of their members had put out great big pots of hot soup for us. And it was a miserable eight hours up there anyway. And it was great to, to meet with all of them because the division really worked together to put on, a, like you say, a social for the people that were coming in. And everybody could sit around and visit. You could visit with all the people from throughout the uh, complete district. Now I think what they do is awards night. Yes. Which is nice because you got to get out all of your awards and it's nice to have awards, but with the awards being given out, there's not as much socializing. Before we had the two to three hours to sit around and talk. Now, sometimes people don't show up until it's time to give the award. Um, yeah, it's not as intimate as it's it was. Di it's different. It's definitely different. Yes. I really enjoyed when we were part of District 33, exploring parts of California that yeah. I might otherwise not have ever gotten to visit. And I thought that was that was a tremendous aspect. But you're right, those drives up to Fresno and uh, Ventura, uh, they could certainly be challenging. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and the thing I liked though that I miss uh, right now is you were talking about Friday night we used to have the welcome to the new DTNs, sort of a little oh. mini ceremony. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. Oh, oh yes. We can. And I remember, in, uh, you know, I've got, as I said, I, I've been a Toastmaster uh, for 14 years. It took me seven years to get my DTN. And I was at the ceremony, I've forgotten where we were, somewhere in California. And I mentioned to the lady standing next to me, whom I didn't know at the time, that, you know, I was a slow learner. It took me seven years. And she said, that's nothing. It took me 20. <laughs> <laughs> and that just drove home the point that I like to make with uh, new Toastmasters that, you know, it's self-directed that no one's going to say, you have to become a DTM by X date within a certain amount of time. Uh, it's all self-directed. So it's up to individuals to determine what goals they want to achieve. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to ask both of you, Billy, is if, what would you say, we're, you know, we're in this pandemic, I think it's, it's, it's made uh, a challenge to, to keep our, our district moving forward. What advice would you give to potential new leaders? Maria, let's start with you and then I'll, same question to Phyllis. Certainly, I, I do find it challenging because of not being able to, to meet in person and you're depending on who is going to show up in a square on some screen and how can you really get to know people like that. But what I will always say is, is you, you have to deal with the cards that you're given and that's what you have and don't give up. Don't give up. Try to figure out the good part of it. and. Reach out to the people, the ones you know, and, and those will introduce you to other ones outside of these Zoom meetings. Maybe there can be a phone call to somebody, kind of pick their brains and don't give up because 
this is not going to be going away and you don't want to miss the chance to get the benefits of this program. I've seen people literally in our club, a member that was in the program very short time before we had to go online. And that keeps telling me, well, even online, this can work very well because I have seen her develop so much through this almost, I don't know, a year and a half, two years that it can work. I think it's extremely challenging. I will not say that I that is my, my favorite thing. I prefer the in-person meetings, but this is what we have. And if you remain positive, you have to stay positive with it. It can work, but, but reach out. If you're a brand new member, someone in the audience listening to this and you haven't been to a Toastmasters meetings, attend one and then reach out to somebody outside of the meeting and get some help on that. But be participate because it is really, really something that will benefit every one of you. Before I go to Phyllis, I just want to follow up on one thing you said is that it's going to, uh, I'm paraphrasing, it's going to be like this going forward. Meaning that, yeah, we're always going to have Zoom. And I think there's there are good aspects of Zoom. And this is not a negative when we say we're going to have Zoom for a long time. I think that means we're going to anticipate hybrid meetings. And we need to become experts in how to communicate in a hybrid setting. Because there are clearly things that work well on Zoom. For example, when we have our educational night on the second Saturday that our program quality director has been running, I think that's great. We're able to do and offer consistently new member orientation, for example, introduction to pathways and a variety of classes that are optional that people can attend. That's really good. At the same time, I agree, we, it's uh, meeting in person can't be replicated. So we need to have the best of both worlds and that's what hybrid offers. Now I'm gonna to go to you, Phyllis. What would you say to new folks who are considering moving into leadership positions within Toastmasters? What advice would you give them? Well, I would say go to their clubs as many times as possible, but find out what time the Zoom room will open. Be early. There's a lot of conversation that goes on before the meeting. That's where you get to know people. So uh, I believe that it's Saturday morning storytellers. I'm not sure what the title is, but they always say, you know, that you could uh, go at 9.30 and the meeting starts exactly at 10. So, you know, you've got some time in there. What happens is when we advertise our meeting at a certain time, I'm finding that guests don't show up until that time. So maybe we should advertise it earlier. So as a new area director, I would be sure to know what time their Zoom meeting, their room actually opens up so I could go and do some visiting. The more you get to know about your people, the more you're able to find information that will help. I find that very few clubs know about the incentives that the district puts forth or the contests that they have. So that would be another thing be sure and talk to them about. Have you got a question in mind, Ken? Um, I, I did have a comment in mind. I, I, we have a, a new person who's joined us, uh, Ayana, and I wanna let them know uh, that I will uh, give them an email. Uh, he says, I'd like to join. So, <laughs> so I'm going to get back to him. And in the meantime, I, I want to talk about uh, going back to something Marie said, I'd like you to, to give your opinions uh, on, uh, are we going to be looking at uh, you know, COVID in a, in a longer way, is it going to become like the flu, do you think? And how does that impact that where we get a, a vaccine every year? Uh, is that something that we're going to be dealing with? I, I hope that, that we are getting close to where people start feeling this is, this is endemic now. This is not just a pandemic that is going to be here and gone. It's endemic like the flu and it's going to continue to happen and people become more comfortable with 
the fact. It's the fact. It's like having the Zoom meetings. Well, is it, to me, to me, is a fact that this is endemic. It's going to be around, and we have to accept it. And if you have to get a shot every year, and if you normally get your shot, get your shot. If you don't get the shot, don't get the shot. I I do believe that you have to have that you should have the freedom to choose on that. But we, as as a whole, become more comfortable and not let it stop us from functioning. I think we need to move on and, and live our lives and accept it and not be just so afraid and limited by it. But that's, that's a very personal opinion. Well, no, but that's what counts is we all have, we all have our opinions and I think they are valuable. And I agree with you that we need to be able to be adaptable. And I think one example of that, of course, is Zoom. Uh, we are uh, at 625, so I want to have a moment to just say to our viewers and listeners that if you would like to be a guest on Wake Up with Toastmasters, uh, we are, uh, the show is on live on Facebook, Monday through Friday. Uh, Phyllis and I host on Tuesdays and Thursdays, on Mondays and Fridays, our program quality director, Jean Williams, and her co-host, Jean Dunford, are there. And on Wednesdays, our public relations manager, Jennifer Smith with her co-host, uh, Jane Dunford. So if you'd like to be on the show, please email me at d115cgd at gmail.com. Couple of other announcements while I have the floor here is coming up on February the 12th, we will have our education night. That's a Saturday. It goes from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I don't think we have all of the educational offerings together yet, but they will be in the upcoming edition of the newsletter that'll go out on um, February 1st. And then we have game night, which is the last Saturday of the month that's also online. And that's an opportunity to just to get together online and to have fun. I oh, one other thing I wanna remind uh, the district executive committee, that meeting is coming up on February 5th. So you'll be hearing more about that in the not too distant future. Now, all of those meetings, I think are going to be online. I know the educational offering and the game night, and I believe the DEC is gonna be online this time as well. I wanna thank uh, Maria for being here. I've known Maria a long time. She's just a wonderful human being and a real treasure uh, for us in District 115, and of course, my host. Maria, is there any, are any final words you'd like to share with our audience? If you haven't joined Toastmasters, this is the time to do it. Do it now and stay with it because you will not regret it. It's a wonderful program. But to you personally, Ken, I think you put on that newsletter. I wanted to tell you that I think it's wonderful. It's a great way to reach out to the membership. It's good information. And I appreciate you doing it. Phyllis, it's always great to, to share things with you. We do go back a long way. I appreciate you having me in the program. But again, for those that might be watching that, are thinking of joining, just do it. Just do it because you will find that it is only beneficial to you. But thank you again for having me on the program. Thank you. And Phyllis, anything uh, you'd like to say to our audience before we sign off for the day? A great thank you to Maria for coming and visiting with us. And also, uh, we've asked for people to come and join us. Most of the people have distinguished Toastmaster, DTM behind their name, but we're Love to have new members come and visit us and tell us what's happening in your club. What are your feelings about Toastmasters? Maybe people that have only been in for three or four months are newer. So everyone is welcome here. That's a wonderful point. I, we'd love to have some, some new members come on and join us and talk about what led them to Toastmasters, how they think it's going so far, and even what is it that we can do to make your journey better? Because one of the wonderful things about Toastmasters, at least in my experience, is there are always people around to help support you, to help you move forward, to give you advice and guidance. You only have to ask. Well, again, thank both of you for being here. Now, tomorrow, Phyllis, you and I will be back. We are filling in for a Jean who couldn't make the, the show tomorrow. So please join us and let's see, we do have a guest. Pardon me a moment here while I look this up. I know I had it, but I should have had this out. 
Paul Beal from Jackpot Speakers will be joining us tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.